Hello and welcome back to our study of Pnei Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Eliezer Malame Shlita. Hope everyone is doing well as we progress through our week. Please continue to daven with the strength of Chaylei Tzvagana Yisrael, Lidufu Shalema, for those who need, and for the safe return of all of our hostages. Hope everyone recovered from, I guess it would be considered a big snowstorm, but it's only relative to what we've had the last couple of years. Kind of came and went in a flash, and we are back to business. Just to remind everyone again, next week, I probably won't be able to pre-record, but next week I will be leading a mission of our shul in Israel, so we'll resume the sessions when I return. But the next chapter, Mitzvah Satsniyas Batzava. Parshia Shlemi Yeshna Batarl Ofav Al Shalmachana Israel. There's an entire parsha in the Torah about the situation of the camp of Israel and what has to be done, Shatzar Lios Kadosh Vatahor, that the camp has to be sanctified, it has to be pure. Vizel Shona and the Psukim and Devarm, I'll read through the Psukim and Chaf Gimel. Kisaitse Machana Ali Vecha, Venish Martami Koldavara, Kiebacha Isha Shaloya Tahar Mikra Lila, we tell me Khutzla Machane, Loya Voltoha Machane. Very detailed series of psukim about how you have to conduct yourselves in the camp, but I think the key word is v'hayam machanecha kadosh. Kechwal. Hadrach hasator l'machane li shamar mikol davara. The Torah's warning, or the guidance of the Torah, is that we have to protect ourselves from any wicked or evil thing. Hainu mikol ha'averus sheba Torah, from all the sins that are in the Torah, u'bechlalan ha'averus shenech shavos ro'os miyuchad, and particularly those that are considered wicked. K'mo avodah zara, gili arayus u'shvichas damim. So particularly we want to refrain or protect ourselves from idol worship, murder, unlawful relationships. And from the fact that the Torah says you have to watch yourself, protect yourselves from a davara. So it's a play on the words or it's a hint that we have to be careful about things that involve dibur, speech. And Chazal tell us that this is a hint to the prohibition of cursing Hashem and, of course, the prohibition against speaking Lashon Hara. Kvar Amr Chazal, the Gemara in Erechen, tells us on Daf Tesvav, Kalam Saper Lashon Hara, Magdil Avonos Keneged Shel Shaveros, Avodazara Gileros Ushvichas Domim. That anyone who speaks Lashon Hara, that it, this sin is so great that it corresponds or it's the same as the big three that we just mentioned idol worship, murder, and a lawful relationships. Ula, ba'ufam mifurat hid gisha tor li shamer machane ben yonet snius. That's bechlal, but specifically, when it comes to the camp, or let's say we're talking about a military camp, we are warned and to protect in areas of modesty. Shezua kavanim furetes shal davara. This is this particular instance of davara. Shafilu meherhure averet zrichli shamer machane. That even from thinking about averos about sins, we have to be careful in the camp. Kavish Shemuva B'Talmud, as the Gemara in Avodah Zarah says, Tana Rabbanon, V'nishmarta B'Kol Davara, Shalo Yihaher Adam B'Yom, V'yav Olide Tumah V'layla. When it says Davara, that we have to be careful not to think about things that are Averus during the daytime that might cause us to sin at night, or any sort of impurity at night. V'chein Mashram B'Sofa Parshia, She'ikar HaKavana L'Hasir Meher Hurim Shal Erva, Particularly, the end of the parsha warns us that we have to be careful not to have any thoughts of a lewd nature. We don't want to have any thoughts of, again, relationships that we're not supposed to have or anything of a lewd nature. And particularly, if you want to look at it in a practical sense, not just those types of thoughts, but also using foul language or litzanos or just absolute silliness, not being serious, because these are considered sins that are connected to speech, and also to erva. And Chazal tell us, that these types of 
manners of speech and not being serious, they can actually cause souls to be lost from Israel because, again, if we're not serious, if we're not following protocol, etc. But there are many reasons given for this seemingly unusual commandment. All of them are indeed true, as we say, when we have many answers to the same question or conundrum, we say, The Torah gives a reason, and it says, because Hashem, your God, walks amongst your camp. The Jewish people are considered the children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of God. The soldiers that go out to fight on behalf of Israel are considered very dear to God, like his children. Therefore, Hashem has his divine presence dwelling amongst them so that he can, as the Pasuk says, to save and put their enemies in front of them, save them from their enemies. So it comes out that the camp itself, the military camp, is sanctified, it's holy, similar to the holiness of the Beis HaMikdash, and if that's the case, the soldiers are like the Kohanim who have to sanctify themselves as they go into this holy place. However, if something impure, something of Erva, comes into the camp, then the Divine Presence will be removed. Rashi adds, and other members of Chazal, that is only the chayalim, the soldiers themselves, they are meriting or they are connected to this age from heaven. Because the satan, the forces against us in the time of danger, they work against our favor. And therefore, they have to be extra careful. So the Ramban Nachmanadi says, it's known that sometimes in the times of war, the soldiers, that they are exposed or perhaps involved in all types of prohibitions. These soldiers who are under a tremendous amount of physical, emotional, and life-threatening pressure and all sorts of danger, they want to find an out. They want to be free from this pressure. And certainly to let steam off, so to speak, and to have levity, foul language, lewd behavior, these are ways that are sort of a release. And they also are in a situation where, you know, we would never kill someone, but you're put in a situation of war, all of a sudden, you're killing somebody like it's nothing. So your whole perspective changes. A soldier is put in a position where he has strengths, and he has these very, very deep confrontations with himself that he never recognized before. If he doesn't know how to compartmentalize these appropriately, then if he doesn't put them in the right perspectives, then it's possible they could turn into negative behavior. Therefore, the Torah warns us, understanding that when you're engaged in war and killing and the need to let off steam, therefore we have to have special prohibitions in place, special warnings that we have to keep the holiness of the camp. Levad Mizos, Kasher Imishpachto. So aside from this, when a person is found with his family, you behave yourself when you're with your family. You're not thinking about loot behavior and kind of going out of the boundaries. But when you go to the army, then you have no more regular structure, no more routine that you have at home. And therefore, we worry that somebody might step out of line and the possibility raises. And furthermore, There's also a further fear that there are some soldiers, because they're constantly involved in military matters, in operations, 
in guarding and doing things for behalf of the nation and the land, that they might come to belittle or not take so carefully the small aspects of mitzvot, what type of thoughts they have, or the type of language they use. Therefore, the Torah comes to tell us that the camp, the military camp, has to be sanctified. And only because of its sanctity will we be victorious. And also, after the war, the soldiers have to build their families. And if they behave inappropriately during war, then when they come home, they will not behave appropriately towards their spouses and be able to build their families. Because true modesty, holiness, is the foundation for building a family and the love in a family. So it comes out that the principle is that simply speaking, in the army, one has to be very careful from lewd behavior, foul language, thinking about things, uh, matters of Avera, and hopefully with the purity of minds, they'll be able to be successful in battle and then be successful after battle at home. That's why we see all these videos now of the soldiers with their Sifri Torah and the chants that they recite before they go into battle, Shema Yisrael, Anim Amin, etc. That's Vahayam Achanecha Kadosh, that's keeping our camps holy because this is like the Kohanim in the Beis HaMikdash. In any event, please continue davening for the Chaylei Tzvagana Yisrael, for Shalema for those who need, and of course the safe return of all of our hostages. We keep all of our camps holy. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you here next time. Have a great day.